Hello everyone for the Johnson iRacing team. This is Aaron Johnson bringing you the second part of our ongoing tutorial that will walk you through how to use paint.net to create custom paint schemes in iRacing. Uh, when we finished last time we had downloaded uh, paint.net. We'd included the DLL file to be able to process and utilize uh, PSD files and we'd actually opened up the paint.net template here in or the street stock template here in paint.net, we'd done away with a lot of extraneous layers that we weren't really going to need. And I think we're ready now to begin to start painting in paint.net. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to think about what we want to make in terms of a paint scheme. And what I've decided is that I want to build a paint scheme for Diet Coke. I'm going to do that because it's going to allow me to show you how to do several things. One, Diet Coke's in sort of a chromium plated silver can. So we're going to need to be able to do some chrome work. Two, the Diet Coke part and the white stripe that's on the can are kind of flat rather than being glossy, so we're going to be able to do some flat textures as well. And then three, we'll be able to come up with numbers and put on some of the racing decals, you know, things like crane cams and, and um, Goodyear emblems and the kind of decals that a race car would have. So we're going to be able to walk through doing all of those different things. With that in mind then, the first step that we have to take is we've got to figure out what color of silver are we going to use for Diet Coke, right? Because Diet Coke's kind of a silver color. Uh, to do that, uh, first off, I always try to have the main car body all by itself, and I try to leave it completely alone. So what I'll do here is I'm going to add a layer. I'm just going to have the main car body highlighted. I'm going to click plus here. That's going to give me layer 16. I'm going to rename that, and I'm going to rename that Diet Coke Base Paint because that's the base that we're going to use for Diet Coke. Now, if we're working in paint.net, the actions we take generally only occur on the layer we have highlighted. So I've highlighted the Diet Coke base paint. I've got to figure out what color do I want my car to be. Now, if we're going to use a chromium color, one of the things that we know is that a white color tends to turn silver. So if we were to go completely white, it would look like a chrome bumper. Completely white is to slide our red green and blue sliders here to maximum. That gives us a pure white. If we were to paint the car pure white, we can just use the paint bucket and it'll paint the entire car, the base paint here, white. That's going to be too chromium. We don't want to be quite this perfectly white. So if we drop these, say, to 230, That's 23. That's really not what we want. We want 230. And we drop this one to 230. Then we're going to be slightly less white. This is a little more of an off-white, a very, very, very light gray. This may very well work for us. And since I had the paint can selected and I was still on the center of the screen here, it changed the car color for me. So I can go back, see, and you can see that as we move these sliders since we're still basically editing that paint color that we used. So we're going to go ahead and take this back to all white. And I think we're going to call that good enough. All right. So I went ahead and hit the escape button. Now those things shouldn't be, uh, shouldn't be connected. So our paint color shouldn't change if we move a slider now. See, I can move this slider and the paint color is not going to change. All right. So I've got my base color. I want the car to be white. What am I going to do next? What is the next thing that I need to do? Well, I, I you know, I kind of think that I need to find a Diet Coke logo. If we're going to do Diet Coke, maybe we should have a Diet Coke logo. Now, I'm going to use the internet. I'm going to go to google.com. I'm going to type in Diet Coke logo transparent PNG because I find PNG files to be the easiest things to work with. I'm going to click on the images tab right here. And I'm going to scroll through some of these and see if there's one that I particularly like. Um, I do kind of like this one that's got the red and black Diet Coke together, uh, especially since it's got the shadowing around the Coke. Um, that one I don't like so much. I don't really like the gray. Uh, this one's okay. Coca-Cola Light, That's has been my experience with Diet Coke in Europe, is it's Coke Light. Uh, but since we're over here in the U.S., I, I think I'm, I think I kind of like this one. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this one. Um, and then I'll go ahead and click on the PNG download here. And what we're going to find is that it takes us to one of these PNG sites that make their money from advertising. And they're absolutely covered with ads and with things that you can click that say open or download or open. And you've got to find the right one. right? And that's not always easy. 
uh, but I believe that it's this one right here, the free download. So we're going to go ahead and hit that. It looks like I'm right. So now I've got to see an ad, but once my link is generated, I'm going to hit the download PNG link, and you'll see that download came in right over here in the bottom left. Okay. Now, the other thing that I really appreciate is that I kind of like using Paint 3D for a few things. And one of them is I like to use Paint 3D to open up some of these PNG files that I download. So I'm going to go ahead and start Paint 3D. I'm working on two screens here, so I'm going to go ahead and move this over onto the main screen so that you can see it. So I kind of like Paint 3D. I'm going to go ahead and maximize it. I'm going to click the Open button. I'm going to Browse Files, and I just downloaded this Diet Coke file, so I'm going to go make sure that I go to the Downloads folder. Now mine automatically came up to it. But let's say it came up to your desktop. You'd go over here and click on Downloads, and then this is the download that I just made, and you can tell by the time. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight it and click Open. And that's my Diet Coke file. Now I'm going to go ahead and save this as an image. I'm going to keep it as a PNG. I'm going to put it in the iRacing files that I keep. So I'm going to go to iRacing. I've got iRacing files that I utilize. This is where I put all my individual car files. I'm working on a Diet Coke car. I already created that file. Then I'm going to save the Diet Coke logo. And I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate it here. All right, so now I've got two of these Diet Coke logos. They look pretty good, uh, and I should be able to use those if I'd like. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize. That's what that little bar was. I'm going to go ahead and minimize uh, the PNG file. And then I'm going to figure out how to put this Diet Coke logo on my car. But I don't want to put it right on the base paint. I need to be able to work with it separately. And if I'm going to work with it separately, I need another layer. I'm going to rename this layer uh, Sponsors. Okay. And this is where I'm going to put all my sponsorship material. Right. So now I've got the sponsors layer highlighted. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open that file that I just saved. So I'm going to go to open. I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm going to go to iRacing files. Remember, I saved that in the Diet Coke car. And I'm going to go ahead and open the Diet Coke logo. And that's going to open this as a separate file inside paint.net. So I've got two files open at once. Just like in Excel, if you've ever worked with Excel, you can have two spreadsheets going at once and you can toggle back and forth. You do the same thing here. Now, I don't want the white stripe. I really don't want the white stripe to be a part of this. I want to get rid of that white stripe. I don't like it. I want to be able, if I'm going to put a white stripe on my car, to do it myself. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the magic wand. Now, if I just hit the magic wand button, it's only going to select the one shape, and that's this one outline we can see here. It's the only white piece that it that is selected. So if I just use the select button, it'll only select the one shape. In this case, the C and the O were connected. So I really don't want to do that. If I hit the control button, I can select multiple selections at the same time. This is by holding control. I can go through and I can select every little bit of white that I can see. And that'll work. You can always do that. But Paint.net gives you an even better option. So I'm going to undo these. And that is to use the Shift button. If I use the Shift button and the magic wand, if I click a white shape, it's going to outline all of the white shapes in my photo or in my image. So it's just done in one click what it took me four or five clicks to do a minute ago. I want to get rid of that. So now that I've got that all selected, I'm just going to hit the Delete button on my keyboard. Boom. That's all gone. Now I've got a new Diet Coke logo, and my Diet Coke logo doesn't have that stripe in it. And just for fun, I'm going to go ahead and save that so that I've got it in the back. My problem is that the background that I see here is going to be saved too. Uh, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and save that. Um, I think we need to rename it so that we know that it's without the stripes. We're just going to call it No Stripe. Uh, we're going to hit OK. Now we've got that Diet Coke logo saved. The next thing we can do is we could try to figure out how to copy this logo and paste it onto the car. It's certainly an option. If we wanted to do that, we can hit the magic wand. We'll select shift. That's going to give us all the reds. Probably not what we want to do because we've got so many little black pieces. Instead, we probably want to use shift and pick something black. And then hit the control button and select our three other red shapes. Now we've got that entire logo selected. We're just going to come up here and hit the copy button. And we'll toggle over to our car. 
we're going to hit the paste button. That's right here. Paste the logo on. This is what it looks like. Um, it looks like it's about the right size for the hood, so we're going to rotate it 90 degrees. Put our Diet Coke logo on the hood of our race car. Let's slide it up just a little bit. I uh, don't like the way... I can't tell for sure if that's centered, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the wireframe button. And that'll give me a better idea if I'm centered. You can see I'm one, two, just about three lines in here. That's pretty close to the middle of the car, so I think we might move it just one, one set of pixels over. And so now I've got Diet Coke on the hood of my car, but it's not really on the hood of my car because we're working in this sponsor layer right here. So if I turn the sponsor layer off, Diet Coke disappears. right? If I turn the main car body off and turn the base paint back on, now I've got Diet Coke. The other thing you need to know is the order of layers over here matter. If I move the base layer, if I just grab it and pull it up, it's in front of the sponsor layer now. So the only way I could see the sponsors is if I turn off the base paint, then I can't get my white car together. So I really want to make sure that the layers are in the order where I'm going to be able to use them. Now, one of the things I noticed when I brought in the Diet Coke symbol here, the Diet Coke logo, is that it was really too big to fit on the quarter panel of the car. So I'm going to have to go back to the other side here. I'm going to have to go to my Diet Coke and I'm going to have to resize that image. Uh, and I think it probably needs to be about half as big. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that it maintains the aspect ratio. And I'm just going to cut the number of pixels in half from 801 to 400. That's going to automatically resize my Diet Coke symbol. And now we're going to go select everything again. We're going to use the shift button. We're going to hold shift and click on something black. Then we're going to hold control and click, click on the CO, the K, and the E. Do the same thing. We'll go to copy. Come back over to this side of the car. We're going to click the paste button. Now we're going to grab this by this, this uh, basically for lack of a better word, it's an arrow key. We're going to grab this. We're going to pull it down. Um, that's pretty close to the right size. Let's turn this off and see what it looks like on the blue. I think that looks pretty good. We're gonna, we want to make sure that we have things in about the same spot, so I want to pull an anchor here. But I think that looks pretty good. So I kind of like the Diet Coke there. We're going to go back over here now. And I want to be able to rotate this image 180 degrees so that it's exactly the opposite on the opposite side of the car. To do that, I'm going to go to Image. I'm going to rotate 180. Then I'm going to do the selection process one more time. I'm going to use Shift, click on something black, then use Control, click on the CO, the K, and the E. Go one more time to Copy. Come over here to my main paintwork. Hit the Paste button. I'm going to grab this directional. I'm going to pull this down, and I'm going to try to get this just about in the same spot. Now, I noticed that we are right at the edge of that first line above the rear fender, so I want the C to be right at the edge of that first line above the rear fender. That looks pretty good. Um, we are, here's sort of this, these two pieces. We're one, two, three. The fourth line's going through the E. One, two, three. The fourth line's going through the C. I think we need to go just a skosh toward the back of the car. I'm going to use the arrow keys to move myself just a skosh toward the back of the car. And I think that looks pretty good. So we've created our sponsor layer, and we put our main sponsor on the, on the rear quarters and on the hood. That's a pretty good start. And we're about 14 minutes into this tutorial, so I think that's probably enough for this time around. Um, we'll pick up here with the next tutorial. For the Johnson iRacing team, this is Aaron Johnson saying, Go fast, turn left, have fun.